Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for being here today. Uh, today is a continuation of the discussion about the property, uh, surplus property in the school district's inventory. Uh, what we wanted to do today is to lay out a more detailed version of the proposal. Uh, we will have uh, two brief presentations, the first by Councilman Jones referencing uh, current buildings, um, recently closed buildings. Uh, the second brief presentation will be by Councilwoman Blackwell that talks about uh, the repurposing of uh, buildings uh, that have happened in the city of Philadelphia. So essentially, uh, we want to make sure that there continues to be any inquiries about the possibility of buildings uh, and the reuse of those buildings and the potential sales of those buildings. Uh, we will lay out a very detailed proposal and a plan uh, which will be subsequently followed by an introduction of the ordinance in tomorrow's session of council. Councilman Jones. Good morning. First of all, thank God we opened our uh, public school system on time uh, yesterday. The question becomes, how do we make it until June? One of the answers has been put forth by our council president to sell assets that we control uh, in a timely manner in order to build up about $50 million in needed funds in order for us to make it until June. As you can see, we uh, have put up uh, actual illustrations of available properties, um, some high-end, and uh, some critics of this idea will say, well, low-hanging fruit is uh, areas like University of City that have value based on proximity to development. But what we wanted to demonstrate today is that even in areas that are less desirable, there is value. Um, one of which uh, is right behind me, Brooks uh, Elementary in my district, 56 and Wallucent, was transformed into a senior citizen complex housing 30 plus units. Happened, happened quickly uh, with the assistance of the state, uh, utilizing those kinds of incentives for the developers, that conversion is easy to be done. If you look at these properties that are to my right, that represents eight properties that are of immediate interest. What is immediate interest mean? That letters actually of offers have come through for these properties. The total value of these eight properties is $106 million. So if you discount this by 50%, just these eight properties alone would cover the $50 million in question. We're talking about 700,000 square feet of building space. Um, and um, if you look at it, again, from my district, well, Whittier is one of the uh, schools that closed out of the 23. Uh, their uh, appraisal is uh, $2.8 million. It is twice the size of the Brooks uh, building, which could house 100 senior citizen assisted living units. Um, when we talk about Philadelphia's demographic, uh, you're talking about an older population that is aging uh, in place and would like to be in facilities like this. Um, as we look about uh, 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 looking for finance again, the uh, Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency offers 4% non-competitive low-income housing tax credits that can be given to developers. So we're talking about real dollars. Uh, let's talk about what happens if you leave these buildings closed. I would direct you to Bieber Annex in my district, 53rd and Euclid, owned by the uh, school district. It has been vacant for 20 years. 20 years. 20 years of blight, 20 years of non-occupancy, 20 years of no taxes to the city of Philadelphia, um, and we are trying to avoid this in 23 other neighborhoods around the city. So um, as you can see, um, Council President has um, got real, real takers for this, and we just seem to think that it would go a long way uh, in um, alleviating blight, a long way in providing revenue uh, for a public education system um, that has been too long uh, living with instability, and that's, this is real money, real opportunity, and we need to make a real decision. Thank you. Thank you. 
Certainly I concur with all that has been said, and I'm proud to stand with our President, Darrell Clark, Majority Leader Curtis Jones, and all the members of council who realize how important this is. To impact $216 million, to impact nearly 100 acres of land in this city makes a big difference. A one of mine that won awards, the late John Rosenthal was involved in it, the Dunlap at 5031 Race Street is an example of senior citizen success. One that is not listed is another one, Home School Senior Complex at 55th and Chestnut that houses some 55 seniors and many businesses on the first floor is another example of success and what can happen. Our experience over the years has been that we can make a big difference and it is important that we as council people have the opportunity to help dispose of, help sell these properties is because we know who the developers are. We know those who are interested in these areas, in these closed schools. We know the communities. We're willing to work with them to make sure they're satisfied in what happens, and it makes a big difference. I was involved in the sale of another school. The old West Philadelphia High School is still closed. I like the idea that we have the ability to help repurpose these buildings because we can put it at safeguards that if they don't come forward, we can have the ability to redirect them. We know who's interested in these schools and we, knows, we know what communities like and what they will accept. So this is just an opportunity for us not only to save so much money, if we fund it the way we propose through paid Philadelphia Authority for Industrial Development, if we have the opportunity to deal with community and, and uh, the communities involved and the developers, it's just a win-win for all involved. So we're proud to be part of it. We're proud to deal, make this commitment we think we can do for $50 million and then have the school board be involved in the other parts of the money, any money that comes after that. And we think that this is an exciting time in our history. Out of all the trouble we have with school openings, this is one of the good things. Us being involved in the repurposing of these buildings, that will be something positive to happen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councilman Jones and Councilwoman Blackwell. Uh, one quick thing, one thing that we cannot allow to happen, and I want to walk over here to this particular picture. It's right here. 2600 28th Street. Some people might think it's okay to allow something like this to continue to be in neighborhoods because this whole notion that we can't find a repurposing of schools in neighborhoods, that's ridiculous. This is like going on four years. This has looked like that. Every other month we have to call to get the vacant tires, to get the tires picked up, the weeds cut. We have to come up with strategies. And this is one of, just one of the buildings that sits in our neighborhoods. So this notion that we can't do anything about it and we just simply walk away and look the other way is wrong. Because this is just not about raising money for the school district. This is about fixing up our neighborhoods in a meaningful way. When you looked at these properties, as Councilwoman was talking about, this is a beautiful property, which is repurposed, affordable housing. This property over here, right, was initially affordable housing since the tax credit application has expired. This is now market rate housing. This is, this is worth more upwards of $5 million, right? These th things sold in two weeks. This is what can happen in neighborhoods. So this whole notion that you're not going to be able to do anything with the quote-unquote high-hanging fruit, Councilman, uh, the reality is that there are significant opportunities um, with financing uh, from the Pennsylvania Housing and Financing Agency, from OECD, using Community Development Block Grant, and recently, the Philadelphia Housing Authority has made available 6,000 ACCs. Those are rent subsidies for developers to utilize to make sure that we can have affordable housing in these neighborhoods. So we need to move ahead. We need to proceed with our program. Uh, as I said earlier, there will be legislation introduced tomorrow for the $50 million uh, that the school district had asked for, and we're prepared to move ahead and come up with a significant repurposing of schools in addition to providing the school district with much ne needed revenue. Thank you. Any questions? It will essentially be a transfer ordinance, uh, transferring $50 million to the finance department for purposes of subsequently 
moving to pay or any other entity uh, where we think it would be appropriate to have that money made available for the purchase of a surplus real estate in the school district. Didn't say that. I don't know yet. They don't allow me to introduce bills. I'm the council president. I have to have uh, someone on the floor introduce a bill. <clears throat> I'm here to talk about our bill, our proposal, and the repurposing of these properties. What happens tomorrow with respect to anybody else's legislation, uh, we'll have to wait until tomorrow. And all due, all due respect. All due respect. We're going to introduce the legislation tomorrow to move $50 million for purposes of purchasing uh, school district inventory and hopefully move forward with the resale, the sale, and the repurpose of those particular properties. And any subsequent sales of uh, properties will go directly to the school district, and we're hoping that we can get maybe more than $100 million in total revenue to go towards the school district. Uh, in all due respect to the school district, and I think they may concur, they are not in the business of selling real estate. Um, these, these properties, well, I mean, that's not what they do. I mean, if you called and asked me to go teach a fourth grade class, I'd be clueless, right? That's what they do, right? That's not what I do. And I mean, their core mission is to educate children, and we would like them to continue to focus on that. The simple reality is, is that we're trying to put in place a, a process and a proposal to get the real estate and to get the surplus inventory out of the hands of the school district, to get it to people who actually do that for a living and sell properties. These properties here have already had expressions of interest um, from significant uh, developers slash owners of existing real estate. So this is real. Uh, It, it, is, it is our plan to assist the school district in selling real estate. It's our plan to assist the school district in selling real estate. I mean, I don't want to be critical of people. That's not what they do. I mean, you know, we have laid out a proposal and a plan uh, which will solve several problems. It will raise revenue for the school district. We were asked to come up with a strategy for $50 million. We have laid that out. But it will also take significant surplus real estate out of the inventory of the school district, no longer requiring that they continue to have carrying costs and all of the other things associated with having, um, in some cases, derelict property. And in addition to which, it will improve conditions in some of these communities across the city. Uh, as you've seen, the repurposing of these buildings has actually stimulated development around the perimeter of those locations. So this is a situation that's a win-win for everyone, and we think that we should assist the school district in achieving that goal. I don't know that answer. Here's what I do know in my district. Bieber Annex has been vacant 20 years. So that's like saying, with all deliberate speed, uh, we need to move this into a wheelhouse of expertise where people who move properties, they educate young minds. We, we acknowledge their area of expertise. 20 years is too long to wait for a sale. If we have real properties with real developers that have real interests, we should move that forward.
uh, that's one of mine. I've talked with many developers who are interested. I have several. I may have four or five for one school alone. Nobody knows the third district like I do. School district doesn't know it. I may not know the fourth. I may not know the eighth or the ninth, but I know the third. So the school district doesn't know it. The administration doesn't know it. We know our districts. That's why we're elected. So we have more information about what works and what communities will support than anyone else. It's just that simple. We know more than anyone else about what will work, how to move things more expeditiously, because we know who's already interested. And we could make it move so much smoother if we can get this uh, legislation passed. We're interested in supporting ourselves. Everybody has to do their part. The, certainly, we support the mayor and his desire to do this, but we can do it better. And we can do it best. Well, given the fact that we have letters expressing interest uh, for purchases of these properties, um, if all people get on the same page, I think we can move these properties relatively quickly. Uh, a number of these properties already have uh, preliminary uh, development strategies for uh, these locations. I mean, these are people, in some cases universities, who have substantive proposals on the table and with real development. Um, initiatives, and I think that we can move relatively shortly, assuming everyone gets on the same page. Uh, this, for our perspective, is a no-brainer. Um, as I said earlier, it solves several problems, and we just need to move ahead and do it. Uh, well, we, we, we don't. You have to, you, no. no, we don't. Can we um can we can we focus on what we're here to talk about here? That's not the way all due respect, I mean, you know. You never know what people are gonna introduce until ten o'clock on uh Thursday morning. Not for legislation. That's only for resolution. We we we've We've talked, with PA, we've talked with the head of PIDC, and we've talked with the school district and the SRC. I mean, these are ongoing conversations, as I indicated earlier. This proposal that was presented initially was shared with both the SRC, shared with uh, Superintendent Height, and shared with the administration. So this is a process that evolves. What we wanted to do today, uh, based on a number of inquiries about whether or not properties could actually sell or whether the high-hanging fruit could actually come to some product, productive use. Uh, we wanted to show that we didn't invent the wheel. Um, a number of properties throughout the city have already been repurposed. We're just simply saying that we can accelerate that in a structured way because these properties that were done over the years were basically one developer or one council member coming to the school district and saying, can we do this? Now we have an opportunity to do this in a very aggressive way. Whatever needs to happen to make this move, uh, I'm sure that we will be prepared to support that. And you need to talk to the school district about that. Yeah, th th yeah I mean, there's no way that you can develop a square block, in some cases a two square block development slash school uh, without the participation of the community. So that, that's a traditional process that we will be intimately involved with. But the whole issue is moving the inventory. And we need to be in a position to move the inventory to a place where it can actually get sold and actually get developed. Consolidate the work you both are doing on these two floors, which is essentially reaching the same end goal. Yeah. 
I, th I think the ability of everybody to get on the same page at the same time always maximizes the outcome. So that continues to be uh, our position that we get together, we work on this, and we can get this done. Because at the end of the day, it's about providing revenue for uh, the, the school district of the city of Philadelphia and fixing, fixing up these derelict properties in neighborhoods. That, that will be the next press conference. <laughs> it, it, it's our belief that um, in addition to the incentives that in the case of affordable housing will be significant subsidies, um, if we can get on the same page, I believe that there will be uh, opportunities for additional incentives offered by X individuals. We'll know that until tomorrow morning. You good? Thank you. Thank you all very much.